with this size parachute rope, we usually get about 10 feet in there, and it's perfect, man. Then I just click it until she slows down. You can see it slowing down. You can see how it doesn't want to keep going. You don't try to bend anything and force anything, but you fill it up pretty good and you let it get tight. If it feels like it's going to come out, you click it again. Feels tight when you pull on it, leave it alone, man. When you loosen these up and you take everything out of the way, you get the spring off and all of a sudden the valve does this, click it again. It'll just tighten right back up. It's just beautiful doing it this way. Now I know the air is the right way to do it and I know the air is probably a quicker way to do it. But with these towers, like I said, they're in your way for two of them and it's very hard to get the tool on there to even put the air in it. Make sure everything's good. Let's see. Yup, that's tight. That's good. Now I could do these two. So if it was loose, I'd click it again. Cracking these loose, I'm gonna pop them off. I'll just do the two at one time. Like I've been doing two at a time as I go. But Andrew, man, I hope your car's ready, broskies. I hope you're ready to come to the track. I think Andrew said, I think Andrew said he was gonna go to Jersey. If you went to Jersey, let us know how you did. If you didn't and you're getting ready for August, let us know, man. He says he's got a, um, a CJ7, I think, right? He said he got a CJ7 that he might want us to fix up over here. Put it up for sale. It's not together yet. It's all gonna be like brand new again man everything's been gone over frame off the whole thing he wants us to help him finish it up i told him we're busy during the summer though we got all these projects and we're painting every day but during the winter we slow down man boom we could jump it in here and get something done so let's see what happens you can put them on a flat table and roll them make sure they're not bent but if you just go like this and turn them believe me you'll know if there's a bend you'll see it there's no bend in them You'll know it, but you can lay them on a flat surface if you want to be technical and roll them. I don't believe we have a problem with them anyways, but I've been rolling them and looking at them by eye just in case. Let's see if this homemade jammy could last two more springs. I think it could. Let's see. You got to tap it with a hammer sometimes because they get stuck. The keepers get a little stuck in there. You just give them a little tap and boink. You better hold your magnet there though when you do that. I believe I stripped it. Yeah, she stripped. All right, let's back it off. It eats it up, so I gotta make another one. I had to make three of these though, three of these threaded rods because they bend and then they start to lose threads. So I had to make three of them to get all 16 done. Let me just give this a little. Yep, she good, she good. Get this one on, get this last one done. I'm very excited. I want to hear this thing run again. But um, I remember my father telling me that too, though. If you're going to upgrade the springs and you upgrade the cam, rather, break it in with the old springs, take them out and put the new springs in, the heavier springs. Let's get it done, man. I'm waiting. Holy mackerel. It's hot again. Everybody's been telling me how hot it's been where they're at. Somebody was, uh, I think 120 was the highest I heard. I believe that was in Arizona. We've only went 91 so far, but it's very humid, man. It feels like the sky could just open up and pour. The sun is out. It's just so humid. I got one left. Let's finish it. You tighten it down and it starts to suck the spring down, right? Oh, that one was easy. See how it just popped right out? Then you just grab your magnet and you just suck them right out. One down, last one, and it worked nice. Let's get it done. Oh, see how these falling apart? Everything was divinely happening the right way. <laughs> I'm the only one that was doing things a little haphazardly. The universe was correcting me at every turn of the road. We're down to the last 60,000th spacer. And guess what? There's none left. That means what? I got them all in. <laughs> and like I said, I said the other day, this took about eight hours, but really we took three hours off. So it really took about five or six hours and a couple of hours today. So it was probably an eight hour, a full eight hour job doing it with the rope, doing it my way. Could I have done it quicker? Sure. Are there guys out there that probably done them in two hours? hours? I'd imagine so, but so what? It's all about getting out in the garage and getting stuff done, man. We got our music. We got our fun. We're having fun, bro. Get out of the house. Get out in the garage. Get something done. Fix that damn lawnmower, will you please? Hey, fix all them broken bicycles or throw them away. Do something. Get out and clean the garage, man. Get off the couch. Get something done. Get down to the track. Take your car down to the track. You don't have to have a race car, you know. There's tons of guys go down there and they take their regular cars and then they start tuning them up to make them go faster. Last one, drop it on, get it in place. Grab the last spring, drop it on, get it in place. Grab the last retainer, drop it on, grab your homemade tool and tighten it down. There we go, look at that. Oh. That fell right in, look. Sometimes you gotta hold them, but watch, let's see. You make sure it gets in there, and as soon as it touches, like right there, let's give it a tap. 
Now you know it's in there. Perfect. Now watch this. Perfect. The keepers are keeping it. Let's get it done, man. That's it. Now let's put it back together. Let's get it done. All right. Push rods. Get it started. Get my wrench on there. Let's get it done, man. So all you got to do is just snug it up by hand and then torque it down. They say between uh, 18 and 23. I'm doing 25. It's fine. Old bolts. Let them, let them stretch in there. They're already stretched, but 25 is good. All right, there we go. All right, I think they're all good. I'm going to make sure nothing falls in here. It happened just the other day. Hmm. Wow. This is, this is cool, man. I'm so glad that this is going back together right now. As long as we clean this good, I don't think we'll have a problem. Because it's hard to get back in here when you're short, you know what I'm saying? You know that's what I'm going to do when I retire, right, fellas? Get me a big old garage down where it's a little bit warmer. The older you get, man, the thinner your blood gets. You don't really like the cold too much, but I do love New York. It's hot summer still, though, man. A lot of people go to Florida, man. They wind up coming back here, people from New York anyways. It ain't in their blood to stay down there long, although I do know a lot of New Yorkers that went down there and they stayed there. You have to cork in the water jackets on both sides of these 385s. If you don't do that, you'll get water in your oil. You will get water in your oil or oil in your water, and you won't know what happened, you know? You'll have issues. There's a blue one for water and a black one for oil, but the black one could be used both ways. The blue one you shouldn't use with oil, but you can. That should work. And then I goop the top, and then I crush them on there. You know what I'm saying? I think this is the victor right here. So let's dig it out. Oh yeah, look at that beauty. Woo wee! Oh. Yup, I'm gonna have to rob the studs out of that other thing. She looked good, man. She's ready to go. Let's see the other side. Yup, we just gotta clean it up a little bit, and we're good to go. This is so good looking, ain't it? Look at this. You don't want to get this goop up in your water systems and get, you know, slowing stuff down. So you gotta be careful. You want to put enough on here to make it schmear, but you don't want to put enough on here to make it schmear in too far and restrict the flow. Ha! Huh. So nice. So nice to work at your, at your own pace, on your own stuff. I gotta tell you, I don't know that I could ever work for a shop. I don't know that I could do that. That's why I went into painting. My father did this for a living, and I, I never wanted to do it for a living, but to do it for the love of it, that's awesome. I love painting for a living. I love, I love earning my money with painting, and even construction, light construction. I mean, I've done heavy construction too. I actually built my entire house, and, uh, and I enjoyed doing it. I loved it. It was so much fun. All right, I just want you guys to know, I am taking the rag out. Rag out is done. It's out. No rags in the block, except for that one. Should I get it? All right, let's get it now. It's on film. No rags in the block. Let's see. Oh, come on. Oh, what's going on back there? I'm hitting something. Come on, Billy. Oh, the throttle is just hitting it. Let's go. Oh, come on. <sighs> I think I did it. You gotta worry about this gasket here. This one always comes out of place, but it looks like it didn't. It looks like it did pretty good. Oh man, it's so nice to see it going together. Gotta love this stuff, man. I absolutely, it's in my blood, you know? Engines and all of that, it's in my blood, man. I completely love it. My father was really good at it. His neighbor had a head-on collision with a brand new car, and he was really depressed because back in them days, they had no money to get another car. The insurance company was like uh, hassling with him and whatever, I forget, it was a problem. So my father said, bring the car over here, put it in my backyard, and uh, their driveways used to go all the way into the backyard where the garage was. So he put it in the backyard. He said, go buy another car that was hit on the opposite end. He had a head-on collision. He found a car that someone was crunched the trunk all the way to the back window. He said, buy that car, you get them real cheap. So he bought that car, I brought it to my old man. My old man cut the two cars in half and put them back together. And uh, the insurance company came to the yard and said, uh, well, do us a favor. I mean, this car's beautiful, it came out fantastic, but why don't you show us where you cut it? And he said, look, if you can't find where I cut it, I ain't telling you. And that was it, he walked away. The company probably paid $400, $300, I don't know. But the car was totaled, you know. Damn, that's a big hole. When you're talking these down, you only go 
30, 30, 30. Perfect. We're at the racetrack. She runs hot. You do want it to warm up though. You want it to get up to temperature before you go down the track. What do you guys think about running a thermostat at the track? Should we run it or should we leave it out? Uh, where's me? Where's me mallet? This thing comes in handy here. Nice. You don't even need a new gasket, man. Just goop it up and send it. Mm. Mm. 22 pounds. Done. We'll get the covers on. Then we'll get the carburetor on. Then we'll hook up all our hoses and get everything, the gas throttle, everything, get all that hooked up. And uh, let's fire this mother up. One valve cover done. I got to look up the torque on these. I think they're about seven. Seven, 12, they're not much. Seven or 12, there's about, uh, there's about eight. So let me go around and give them all about, you know, eight and then I'll crank them to about 12, let's see. If you hold the ratchet in the middle, you won't give it too much, you know? Uh, that's probably 12 right there. That's all, and that's all you need. So what we need to do is go get another plug right here. I need to put a plug in here. I'm not gonna run my heated cores at all. So I'm gonna go pick up a plug and I can button up the rest of this. Look, all I gotta do is drop my distributor in, throw my carburetor on, hook up my hoses, fill up the fluids again, fire it up. And you know what? Stay tuned, that'll be tomorrow. It's time to go home and eat dinner. Subscribe to our channel. We're trying to post every day.